Hey everybody, welcome to Jason Explains Things. So back in February, I did a video about how to make your old inefficient garage door, like these two you see behind me, a little bit better for only a few hundred dollars. That video didn't do too great with views and all that kind of thing until it exploded about a month ago. So I am back to answer your questions and show you the results of the project after seven months. I've read all your comments and I'm ready to answer them. Question number one, does the radiant barrier actually work? So for warm weather, Yes, for cold weather, not so much. So the traditional R value of the Reflectix radiant barrier I installed is only three. So it doesn't provide much benefit at all during the winter, but the summer is a whole nother story. And really quickly before we move on, I wanna say that I am not sponsored by Reflectix or any of the companies that made the products that I uh, used in that video or this one. I purchased everything at full retail price, so I have no reason not to be truthful with you. So here's a couple of refresher facts from that first video. The Reflectix Radiant Barrier insulation blocks 96% of the radiant heat transferring through the insulation, meaning the surface of the metal doors heats up the air inside my shop far less now than it did before. Now in that first video, I messed up a little bit by saying I would compare uh, utility costs like my electricity bill or, or what have you. Now their issue with that, and I didn't really think this through well enough, is now, uh, right behind the camera, I have an air conditioner, a heat pump in here. I don't really have an apples to apples way of comparing like one year over the other because I just can't. But anecdotally, I can tell you, it's made a huge difference. One instance I had, I left for a five day camping trip, 100 degree plus temperatures outside. I left everything turned off in here, including the air conditioner, got back from that long trip, and it was only about 82 degrees inside. But hold on, that is not enough proof for you, right? I get it, I get it, I know what you're doing. You're just, you're angrily doing this, you're just doing it. Just calm down for a second, hold on. Let's break out an infrared thermometer and a new thermal camera that I purchased just for this video and show you the results even better. So if you can see that red dot, that is where we're measuring. And that says 75 degrees. So we go up a little bit right there. Our degrees are spiking quite a bit and it is saying 82. So I know that this is kind of getting a little closer to those, uh, to the gaps where obviously hot air is getting in just because of the nature of the construction of the door. I don't want to do this, but I'm going to go ahead and pull back some of the reflectic so we can get readings from like a panel without it and a panel with it. 73, 80, 79, 80. We getting the idea? I think we're getting the idea, but let's break out a new awesome tool I just bought for this video. It's a new thermal camera. Here we go. Oh, what does the camera look like? Whoa, that camera is hot. <laughs> that is super cool. But we're not here for that. We're here for these. Okay, let's take a look. So there you go. You can see the area with the Reflectix and you can see the area without it. Much cooler. And directly above it, boom. So I don't know about you guys, but that kind of looks like definitive proof, if you ask me. What do I look like in infrared? Whoa, do I look cool? I bet I look really cool. Ah, ah. <laughs> Question number two. Does the double-sided mounting tape that I used work long term? The answer, yes. Yes, it does. So this is Scotch mounting tape. Uh, it's rated at 15 pounds. I think how Scotch measures that is they use 60 inches of tape uh, to something that weighs 15 pounds, stick it on the wall and it's supposed to hold it. So that's, that's the, the type of tape that I used. So I'm not saying that all mounting tape ever will work, but this one, yes. And we have had a crazy variety <laughs> of temperatures here in central Washington. You know, back when I put the video out, maybe you get down to 10, 15 degrees at night. And we had an all time high in recorded history ever about a month ago of 113 degrees. So, you know, but I do keep the, the shop itself, you know, temperature controlled pretty much all the time. So I've had no issues appealing whatsoever on either door. Now there might be several reasons why the mounting tape worked so well in my circumstance and why it might not work well in others. For instance, I live in a very dry climate. Uh, I imagine high humidity might cause mounting tape to fail faster. Also, 
I thoroughly cleaned the doors before I installed the mounting tape. If you remember, I cleaned all the doors, wiped them down, and then I even, because I used a pretty acidic cleaner, I also wiped them down with water after, made sure they're perfectly dry. If you don't do all those steps, if you don't take as much prep work into account, it might not work out as well. Also, because of the shape of the door, uh, the mounting tape is not having to support all of the weight. It's just keeping it, you know, stuck to the door itself. I imagine that helps. It sounds like a good guess. I, does it make me sound smart? I think, I think friction fit helps. <laughs> now, again, I'm gonna say this probably a couple times. If it didn't work, I would 100% tell you, I'm not in beholden to anybody, none of these companies. I just did this because I was doing it and I do videos about what I do on my channel for fun and to help other people. take this and if this wasn't working I would tell you okay so again it looks pretty good it's working let's move on question number three does the insulation mess with the operation of the doors opening and closing another common critique I had uh, was that the weight of the radiant barrier here would mess with the operation of the doors and I made a point of showing the doors opening and closing perfectly fine in that first video to hopefully ward off any comments like that, and that was not enough proof for anybody. Let's do it again. Yeah! Yeah, look at that! Wow, it's so bright! Oh, wow! Let's close them! Yeah! Close! 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 Wow! Eh? <laughs> Okay, but now this can actually be an issue. This is why uh, I didn't go with fiberglass or foam board insulation because you can have issues with, you know, your, your opener not uh, operating correctly or you might need to have your springs adjusted. And that is a huge reason why I went with a radiant barrier insulation option in the first place. I did some math and the radiant barrier insulation on each entire door weighs a whopping four pounds. Math montage. 14.5 inches wide by eight feet long. You have uh, times five panels. You have 48.33 square feet. Now, Reflectix weighs 1.25 ounces per square foot. 48.33 three times 1.25 equals 60.4125 ounces or 3.77578125 pounds, which is officially not very much. Not very much. So for the folks that like to leave the ranty comments about how I'm gonna make my doors explode or I'm gonna cut my children in half, you can leave those comments as you wish, but for my part, I'm just gonna roll my eyes and laugh at you as I see them. Question four. Wouldn't it be better to just get new garage doors? Isn't this all just a waste of time and money? Now, I find this question really interesting. First, these doors are original to this shop, which was built in 1998. I was not the homeowner in 1998. I was busy being terrified of girls. <laughs> Now, just for fun, I went out and got a written bid on how much it would cost to replace these two eight foot by eight foot doors. With basic R18 insulated solid core doors was $3,426.22. And lead times would be up to 15 weeks before the doors would get delivered to the installer. To contrast that, I spent maybe three hours installing that radiant barrier on a Saturday, paying exactly, I went back and looked, $125.34 in materials. Did that make these doors as good as brand new doors? No, of course not. If you watch my channel at all, you're gonna see lots of videos where I take old worn out things and try to improve them and make them better. Case in point, my 1987 Dodge Ram pickup truck. So if I were to say, replace all the suspension components on this truck and fix all its oil leaks, would that make this old Dodge as good as a brand new one? No, of course not. But is it a waste of time to maintain something like this so it lasts longer? You tell me. 
Let's move on to some comment rapid responses. Jay Dizzle says, I'd put Velcro on the top and bottom to go over those hinges. That way you can have take off insulation and put it back on if need be. I wish there was a good way to cover those. And the reason I didn't do that, uh, something like that, was because you're still gonna get all of the hot air coming in from the sides. You know, as you see, there's kind of like those nice boxes, those nice pockets that the radiant barrier kind of covers everything up. You have the air gap. If I tried to put it, you know, with tape or Velcro or what have you, there still would be open air coming in from the sides. So I don't really think it's really worth it. This one's one of my favorites. Mike Baker says, I wouldn't trust that double-sided tape. I would go with E6000, level up and get a Brad nailer. Good idea, Mike. Let's do it. <laughs> Wait, no, not a good idea, Mike. Stay away from my Brad nailer, Mike. Steve Manning says, I'm a garage door tech and that weather stripping is terrible and we won't even sell it. <sighs> now, Steve, I am sorry again to all garage door techs for the, that last video offending you. It was not my intention. But if it is inferior, and I believe you that it is, you should go to Lowe's right now and inform them of their inferior products post haste. And last but not least, Justin explains, I like, I like your, your channel name, Justin. I don't know if you or I was first, but clever regardless. Justin says, I'm really looking forward to your Star Wars fan film. Oh man, Justin, this is just the comment slash excuse I was looking for. All right, everybody, to wrap up this video, I present to you my long awaited Star Wars fan film. Enjoy. Na, 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 na. I brought you something. I'm hungry. The shifter broke. Na, 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 na. Life seems so much simpler when you're fixing things. I'm good at fixing things. Always was. But I couldn't. Why did she have to die? Why couldn't I save her? I know I could have! Sometimes there are things that no one can fix. You're not all powerful, Annie. I should be. I will be the most powerful Jedi ever. I promise you. I'll even learn to stop people from dying. Anakin! It's all Obi-Wan's fault. He's jealous. He knows I'm already more powerful than he is. He's holding me back! Annie, what's wrong? I... I killed them. They're dead. Every single one of them. And not just the men, but the women. And the children, too. They're like animals, and I slaughtered them like animals! I hate them! And scene. Until next time, everybody, God bless, and don't forget to do it yourself. <laughs> Give me those chips.